Several months ago, I received a letter in the mail out of the blue from my eighth grade teacher, Mary Backus. She was cleaning out her files after retiring from teaching, and she held on to some of the papers of her students. The letter was accompanied with a poem that I wrote in middle school entitled Vocation, and also a newspaper clipping of myself and a couple other students who were to help bury a time capsule near our school that year. I remember how vividly the end of elementary school was for me as my parents were very concerned about what middle school would look like in the sea of many changes in public education. They worried along with other parents about where we should go. And despite my protest, as I began to hear rumblings about the school called St. Mary's Catholic, I found myself there the next year. And Ms. Backus knew clearly, as others did, that I did not want to be there, yet she continued to guide me and to push me and to remind me to be patient. Now, there were other remarkable figures at the school. One, the frightening Sister Lillian, who was the principal, and then the quiet parish priest and Father Haddon. And little did I know, all of those folks would be part of planting a seed within me that would reveal who I might become. So I was surprised when I read the poem, and I will share it with you, asking you to bear with me as I was working through what it meant to rhyme all your words. <laughs> the choices are many, which will it be? A life with a family or one with just me? You can't really tell what will happen to you as long as you're happy and not caged in a zoo. Parents always will try to tell you the direction because they want to always give you protection. I hope God is there during my joys and cries and never leaves me no matter my job or size. Some people say that life is a clock racer but take it slowly like a concerned pacer. I wish I could live on the beach very far away, but later it would haunt me someday. So no matter what I do, make houses or rods, I'll always believe in my God. The choices are many, which will it be? A father in church or a sailor of the sea. As a mother looks into the eyes of a newborn, soon the black pupils in their eyes lock and a covenant is made. The mother promises to share all that she knows with this child to protect them and to continue to seek additional guidance from God's spirit in the places where we do not know what will come. A bond is formed. A real love begins. And the love will continue to evolve in stages. And perhaps around 18 years, the child will go off to higher education or the workforce. And she will say, I have given you all that I know. And God has taught both of us so much through our trials and tribulations that we shared. The most memorable lessons come from those exchanges of tough times. When you stick it out together, we find God's hand there guiding us. Yet at 18, they do not go alone. They take their parents and their teachers and their coaches and all those who have given them the playbooks that they have used in their life. And yet we know in those moments of transition that the anxiety still can be palpable as they begin their journey because it's not just their journey, it's our journey. 
God is always working through us. God is always aware of how we're helping to plant God seeds in each other's lives, waiting for those seeds to take shape and to form. And as we get older, we find that these conversations go from guidance to simple dialogue between two people trying to figure out their way in this world to use that gift of free will, which is a blessing and sometimes a curse. And turning to God time and time again as we pray for ourselves and we pray for others. Mother Teresa once said, If we have no peace, it is because we have forgotten that we belong to each other. As Jesus prays today to God about the disciples, Jesus prays that they will carry out Christ's teaching in their own journey because very soon he will be leaving them. This portion of John's Gospel today is called the Priest Prayer, and it's an invitation to hear conversation between a parent and a child. Jesus is perfect in his faithfulness because Jesus always and only belonged to God. Jesus never belonged to this world. And as Jesus talks to God in this most intimate way, it's like the mother speaking softly to the newborn, but we get to listen in. We get to hear how much faith Christ has in the disciples then as well as the faith that Christ has in us. For the knowledge has been passed down to us. The teachings continue to go from one disciple to the next. What will come of such a gift of knowledge? We'll be tested as we go out into that secular world, the world in which hated Christ. Jesus knows the disciples are equipped to do God's work. And Jesus prays to God today that we will remember the truth of love. For it is love that reconnects us. It is love that tells us we belong to God and we belong to each other. Jesus praying to God, Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. Jesus prays the covenant, that is the relationship between God and God's disciples. And the great teacher has blessed Christ, Christ has blessed us. And Christ continues to bless us with all the advocates who we have in our life. And on this day, we give thanks for those advocates, those who have taught us, those who have loved us, those who have walked with us, those like Mrs. Bacchus who have not forgotten us all these years later. She gives me this new paper, newspaper clipping and tells me that next year will be the 30-year anniversary where they will dig up that time capsule, where they allowed middle schoolers to put in items that we thought were important at the time to remember. And it might be worth the chuckle to go back and to see what we thought was so important during that time. But as I read her letter and read the poem and felt that sense of connection with her again after all these years, it was another reminder that things are never important. What defines us is the importance that we place on people, the call to teach, the call to be taught, the call to remember we are all connected to each other, and that connection is what pushes us away from that selfish, secular world, always trying to drive our lives in a different direction. It is that covenant. It is our God. 
It calls us to be in relationship with each other so that we can be in a closer relationship with God. And in that, we are shaped. In those moments, we help to shape others. We allow ourselves to be those who help to plant seeds and allow seeds to grow within. So on this day, when you come to the rail to receive your communion, take a moment and to give thanks for that person who comes to your mind, who has helped to shape you. And maybe when you go home today, to think of someone you might write a letter to and remind them that they are still loved in your heart. Because Christ has loved us so much that everything was given for us. Not so that we could continue to live as the evil ones of this world, but that we can continue to live with God.